This is Rye, New York, a suburb of New York City. Here, all is picturesque, quiet, and peaceful. David McGee, a retired vice president of J.P. Morgan. He has lived here for 15 years. An article in today's newspaper captures his attention. It's about Japan's new interpretations of the Pearl Harbor invasion, the Pacific War, the invasion of China, the rape of Nanking. David's mind goes back. 50 went to the Hotchkiss School in Connecticut and to Yale University and to the Divinity School at Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he went to China in 1912 to become a missionary. And he was there for uh, 28 years. And my mother was an English woman, went to China as a missionary in uh, 1921, I believe. And then they met in China and fell in love and got married. Produced four sons, which to the Chinese was a great achievement. Mrs. McGee always wanted a daughter. Here is David dressed up as a girl. Reverend McGee was an accomplished movie photographer. During the 1920s and 30s, he shot all of the black and white footage you will see in this film. So we started out on a very small basis and then eventually built a school and a chapel and a house on a mission compound uh, in a place called Shaguan, outside the city of Nanking, near the Yangtze River. It was the biggest mission in uh, Nanking, as I recall. You know, they just read, led the life of a, of a clergyman as a missionary, uh, helping with the school and uh, preaching in, in Chinese to the Chinese people on Sundays. David's earliest memories are of China. He recalls that one summer, Nanking was flooded. The moat overflowed. We had rats in the house from the flood. David and his older brother, John Jr., attended their father's Chinese kindergarten. The McGees also spent time in Japan in the late 1920s. Here is Maibashi, Japan. The Episcopal Church ran a leper village at a hot spring in the country. David and his brother John made many friends here as well. But these two peoples, beloved by the McGees, the Chinese and the Japanese, were to be engaged in terrible combat. In July 1937, Japan invaded China. This began an all-out war in which casualties would be innumerable. army encountered unexpected resistance in Shanghai. After a long 
battle, they occupied the city and marched on to capture Nanking, the capital of the Republic of China. The Chinese army retreated before the enemy had arrived and the mayor left the city to the Committee of the International Safety Zone, an organization formed by eminent Westerners. Refugees swarmed to the safety zone and built shelters. From December 13, 1937, to the beginning of February 1938, the victorious Japanese soldiers raped the city. They committed some of the cruelest atrocities history has ever recorded. Reverend John McGee, an American citizen, had various traveling permits from the Japanese military authorities. One of them indicated that photography was allowed. He recorded many incidences. During this period in 1937, uh, my mother and my brothers and I were in England, and my father was in Nanking. And the only way he could communicate uh, would be by mail. December 17th. The horror of the last week is beyond anything I've ever experienced. I never dreamed that the Japanese soldiers were such savages. It has been a week of murder and rape, worse, I imagine, than has happened for a very long time. They not only killed every prisoner they could find, but also a vast number of ordinary citizens of all ages. Many of them were shot down like the hunting of rabbits in the streets. There are dead bodies all over the city, from the South City to Shaguang. I myself saw hundreds of dead bodies in Shaguang. If you will understand that many of the foreigners in town are having the same experiences daily, and then remember that the same thing is happening in a hundred places where there are no foreigners to see, you can imagine the horror of these days. Such sights as I have seen in the Drum Tower Hospital today. The dead body of a little boy, age seven, who had been stabbed by a bayonet in the abdomen four or five times, and whom they were not able to save. Two men were registering, both of whom had been bayoneted by Japanese. One showed me a vicious wound in his neck. I saw a little girl of 10 who was standing with her mother and father near a dugout in our refugee zone watching the Japanese soldiers enter. They killed the parents and gave this girl a horrible stab wound in the elbow which will cripple her for life. A few days ago, while at the university hospital, I saw a boy, 13 or 14 years old. The Japanese soldiers had beat him with an iron rod and then I think ran a bayonet through his ear. The most awful cases are those of men bayoneted or shot and then set on fire with gasoline. One was the owner of a small boat at Chaguan. His body was scorched black. But the most horrible thing is now the raping of the women which has been going on in the most shameless way that I've ever known.
yesterday in the hospital, I saw a woman who had been stabbed in a number of places and her head almost severed. She had been taken with four other women from the University of Nanking by Japanese who said they needed to have some women washed for them and serve them. She herself and the others had worked in the day and then were raped from 10 to 20 times at night. One day, two soldiers told her to follow them, and they took her to an empty house and there tried to cut off her head. She has a perfectly horrible cut in her neck, and the marvel is that she is still alive. There was also a woman, 19 years old, who was with child for the first time, six and a half months pregnant, and who resisted rape. She was jabbed in about seven places on her face, and almost eight places on her legs, as well as a deep stab of about two inches in the abdomen. It was this that caused her to lose the baby. They will save her. I think I've said enough of these horrible cases. There are hundreds and thousands of them. It's like a horrible dream, and when I wake up at night or in the morning, it is horrible to find out that it was not a dream. How long, O oh Lord, how long? It seems perfectly awful to repeat these ghastly tales, but I think a record ought to be kept so that the unvarnished truth will be known. My father left in 1938, uh, smuggling the movies out with him. Well, he would go around and give lectures in churches and to various groups in this country and in uh, England to show people what was going on. The media published many photos extracted from it. John McGee became the pastor of St. John's Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C., which President Roosevelt attended. Later, he was summoned to Tokyo to be a key witness at the Tokyo military trial concerning the Nanking Massacre. What is your name? John Gillespie McGee. Were you in Nankin throughout the month of December 1937, January and February 1938? I was. And he used this very camera to take the pictures of the Nanking atrocities. For more than half a century, David McGee had this footage in his basement. Half a century is a long time, long enough for memories to fade and even for some historical facts to become distorted to suit political interests. Even a record of an atrocity can be altered or simply dismissed. In Japan, this period of history has been presented to the young with an obvious effort to obscure the dark side of the war. The newly published Japanese high school history textbook states, the war, which lasted 15 years, took about 3 million lives. It ended with defeat and the collapse of the Japanese empire. The text totally discounts the loss of life in other countries, 15 million lives in China alone. Regarding the Nanking massacre, the text says, Toward the end of 1937, Japan occupied the Chinese capital, Nanking. Since the Chinese national forces withdrew to Chongqing and continued their resistance, the Japanese government's attempts to negotiate a peace failed. It conveniently avoids the whole issue of the atrocities committed by Japanese soldiers. Furthermore, the well-known Japanese writer, member of parliament, Shintaro Ishihara, co-author of the bestseller, The Japan That Can Say No, states in an interview with Playboy magazine regarding the rape of Nanking in 1937. People say that the Japanese made a holocaust there, but that is not true. It is a story made up by the Chinese. It has tarnished the image of Japan, but it is a lie. But David McGee disagrees. Anybody who's seen my father's movies of the atrocities in Nanking 
Nanjing would know from those movies that it did in fact happen. The Magis are not the only ones who disagree it's with ridiculous. Ishihara. Uh, Li Xiu Ying, a survivor of the Nanking massacre, was 19 years old and pregnant when filmed by John McGee. Now in her 70s, she recalls the incident. One of them yelled, there's a woman here. Other Chinese people were trying to tell the soldiers that I was ill, but they were all driven out of the room. When one of the soldiers was approaching the bed where I was lying, I grabbed his sword from his waist with my right hand. I stood up, holding the sword firmly and leaning against the wall so that I would not fall. The soldier was surprised. He quickly grabbed my right hand. I used my left hand to grab his collar. I cared little about my life. The soldier screamed loudly, and the other two standing in the hallway came in, and one of them stabbed my legs with a bayonet. I could not help but collapse. That was all I could do. Xia Xu Qin recognized a familiar scene when she first watched McGee's film. A grandmother returned home to find her family slaughtered in a most horrid way. Only two young girls survived. Xia was one of them. Number five, Xin Lu Po. That's my home. Japanese soldiers chased after my father and shot him to death from behind. They also killed two children and their parents who were living next to us. Later, they took my youngest sister out of my mother's arms, threw her on the floor, and killed her. Then, they stripped my mother's clothes off. We were hiding behind the door on the other side of the hallway and watched all that happen. The Japanese soldiers would not leave my mother alone. Although both women can speak calmly about their gruesome experiences, Sometimes the bitterness of these memories is overwhelming. I saw the soldiers put my oldest sister on a table, pull down her pants and rape her repeatedly. I was stabbed three times. That knocked me unconscious. When I came to, I saw my second sister lying there naked. She had been raped and murdered. I hate them, hate them bitterly. Why were they so vicious, so cruel? In a recent interview with Time magazine, Ishihara had a new position on the massacre. He said, There is a concept that the Japanese slaughtered 300,000 people, but only 200,000 people lived in the city. I don't deny that the Nanking incident occurred, or that we did wrong things, but to kill 300,000 in a week is impossible. Ishihara then suggested that only slightly more than 20,000 people perished. And I think my father would have uh, said that probably close to 300,000, perhaps more, 
people were massacred in 19 and 1937, 1938. In McGee's mind, the number of victims is not the main argument. Atrocities are absolutely evil. Any sudden loss of life is forever painful and tragic to family and friends. Each life is valuable and irreplaceable. The McGees know this all too well. In 1941, John Jr., an Air Force pilot, was killed in the war. I was uh, very close to him. I looked up to him as a, as a big brother. And uh, I was very uh, sad when he, when he died. John Jr.'s famous poem, High Flight, is especially popular among those in aeronautics. When the Challenger blew up, President Reagan quoted the first and last lines of that poem. It inspires us to reach a higher plateau of being, a better future. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds. I've done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Do you hate the Japanese? <laughs> If it had not been for Japanese militarism, I would not have lost my precious family. Still, I would like to make friends with today's Japanese as much as I can. Because friendship is built between people, isn't it? Sometimes, when I talk to the young Japanese, it reminds me of the past, and I become very sad. When it is cloudy, even now, the wounds hurt everywhere. The wound in your heart must be profound. Half a century has passed since then. I am getting old, too. Any scar fades away as time goes by. Li Xiu Ying told us her greatest pleasure now is knitting sweaters for her grandchildren. To forgive does not mean to forget. Even with the most advanced technology, we still cannot turn the clock backwards. We still cannot revive the dead. We still cannot lie about history. Why do some people persist in denying the undeniable? When offered forgiveness, why do people respond with shameless denial? On this crowded planet, we are bound to share the future together. And the future must be free from lies, free from atrocities. The future should be as John McGee Jr. wrote in his poem. Wheeled and soared and swung, high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless holes of air. Up, up, the long, delirious, burning blue I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew and while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high untrespassed 
sanctity of space, put out my hand and touch the face of God. Thank you.